only just been introduced, but we got a heads up on it last month from Mr Hyde, who in his intemperate opposition to the Māori River, to the, to the Waikato River Settlement Bill last month, condemned the notion that the Waikato River could be considered a tūpuna with the mana, the spiritual authority and prow, and the Māori, the life force of the Waikato Tainui. What he said was, quote, I do not happen to believe it. I think it is hocus pocus. But what we are doing is legislating this hocus pocus. And then he said, I oppose it as the Minister of Local Government, I oppose it <clears throat> as the leader of the ACT Party, and I oppose it as a New Zealander. Well, I have to say to Mr Hyde that as a member of Parliament for a Māori electorate, as a member of, of the Māori Party, and as a Māori New Zealander, the statements that he's making have to je jeopardise the credibility of a government who is working with Waikato Tainui to settle this matter and suggest that either Mr Hyde is skating on thin ice or government is being dragged around by the nose by a party that is struggling to make the margin of error. The fact is that the relationship between iwi and the Crown requires decision makers to think about Māori values practices and interests in both the Local Government Act and the Resource Management Act, including the need to recognise and provide for the relationship of Māori and their culture and traditions with their ancestral lands, water, sites, wahi, tapu and other taonga, having particular regard to kaitiakitanga, and take into account the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi. I wanted to establish the status of the treaty relationship right up front here because this bill that we are debating here today will be of huge importance to Māori. While the bill aims to amend the Local Government Act 2002 to improve transparency, accountability and financial management, in reality it's about the control and provision of water services and water infrastructure. Which brings me back to the Waikato River Settlement Bill. In that bill, we are told that the Waikato River is a single, indivisible, living thing, quote, that flows from Te Taheke Hukahuka to Te Puaha or Waikato and includes its waters, banks and beds and all minerals under them and its streams, waterways, tributaries, lakes, aquatic fisheries, vegetation, floodplains, wetlands, islands, springs, water column, airspace and substratum as well as its metaphysical being. This is specific concrete terminology spelling out in black and white the relationship that Waikato Tainui have with their river, hardly hocus pocus. So when the Minister of Local Government comes to the question of water services and water infrastructure in the Waikato Rohe, he is going to find himself already offside by at least half of the authority charged with caring for the river and the water that flows its length and breadth. This amendment bill aims to remove unnecessary barriers to water infrastructure development by reducing restrictions on private sector involvement in the delivery of water services, the first step in privatising water in Aotearoa. And this bill also aims to remove unnecessary consultation on matters of interest. The effect of this is that local bodies will no longer have to consider the views of affected people, Māori or otherwise. So consultation will go out the window as well, even though the Local Government Act 2002 requires councils to ensure Māori are involved in local body decision-making processes. Now, we know there are some good councils out there engaging with Māori in positive ways, but we also know of councils who are deliberately lagging behind. While the Act emphasises participation and involvement of Māori, it does not direct councils to any particular groups representing Māori interests. So what we sometimes find is that councils deal with their obligations to consult by talking to a Māori staff member rather than to tangata whenua, thus effectively sidestepping their commitment to mana whenua. This is in direct opposition to Māori Party policy, which says that issues around water must include mana whenua, including water rights and privatisation. 
This bill also takes away the process of consultation between local bodies and the community on water issues, reducing those who pay for and use the water to having no say whatsoever over the way in which their most pre precious resource is going to be managed. In fact, this bill will put private contractors in charge of water services without any accountability for the supply of those services. This reminds me of a comment I saw in a recent article called Waiting in the Wings, Privatisation of Your Water by Warwick Taylor of the Wellington Residents Coalition, in which he said, water is protected under law, but they are seeking to change that. Why not do away with democracy altogether if it's cheaper? Given the thrust of this bill, I shudder to think what this government's answer might be to that answer. Mr Speaker, this bill is another step down the slippery slope where the memory of democracy is being used as a water slide to ease the way for privatisation of critical resources. We oppose the loss of democracy to the wider community and to the Māori community that we saw in the ECAN legislation last month. We oppose the unaccountability of private contractors. We challenge the right of this or any government to deny Māori their treaty rights to water. And we will do whatever is necessary to establish a process which is truly treaty-based, recognises the value of local government input, and restores the mana of water all around the country to that status expressed in the Waikato Tainui River Settlement Bill. This bill threatens at a very fundamental level, many of the principles the Māori Party believes in, Mr Speaker, and we oppose it on those very grounds.